Inclusivity is a concept that's gotten a really bad rap in media for the past few years, but in essence, it is objectively a good thing for appropriate media and society. The problem is that there are many people among marginalized groups who think they're being inclusive when in reality they're just performing the same acts of discrimination towards others, only when they do it, they think it's just because of the scars of the past. This is a bizarre occurrence I've noticed amongst TV shows, movies, and even people. An occurrence I've decided to call inclusivity bias. Now, look, the title of this video is in fact called Cleopatra, but we're also discussing another piece of media, The Woman King, as well. Because, well, they both have the exact same form of inclusivity bias. We'll start off with the former, of course. Queen Cleopatra is a Netflix documentary created this year in 2023. And to say this feature documentary is a little bit controversial is kind of like saying the Nagasaki bombing was a little bit damaging. This Netflix exclusive in question is revered and reviled in very disproportionate measure. Revered by people looking for a great black leader to validate themselves, and reviled by, well, pretty much anyone with any form of common sense and basic amount of middle school level social studies education. Before the actual documentary was even released, it had received a vicious amount of backlash and criticism for this thing being very historically inaccurate right from the very get-go, as in before you even watch any form of footage. Cleopatra is black in this. Um, why is that? Cleopatra is not black in real life or history or anything. I, I, I don't even want to say that she's just straight up white. I, if anything, she was like tanned white based off of the various pieces of historically verified relics from ancient Egypt. So, I mean, why is... <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll get back to this later. Uh, let's not forget, of course, The Woman King. I was actually unironically interested in this movie when I first saw the trailer for it. Because I was genuinely interested in a movie that references African history. With a title like The Woman King, you know, something that clearly is supposed to be historically accurate for the time period, because female rulers were unheard of in this point in time in Africa, that's why it's called that, you idiots, use your common sense. But yeah, just like Cleopatra, there's one pretty big glaring issue issue that makes the movie pretty impossible to watch and enjoy unironically. You have one of the absolute worst tribes in Africa during the time period who were renowned for enslaving their own people and selling them off to that evil white man that these creators hate so goddamn much, and you decided to make a movie where you make them look like they're unspoken, epically badass heroes that valiantly fought them off? Like, what are the- what the f are you smoking? Imagine if there was a movie about World War II and the Holocaust and they tried to make the Germans look like the good guys. Oh, yo, the- the- the, the Nazis were actually misunderstood heroes, everybody. It's effing insane. Well, you know what? Actually, it might not be totally insane. To be fair, that actual dumbass Whoopi Goldberg did say that World War II and the Holocaust wasn't that bad because black people weren't involved. So maybe it's not too hard to think that that's straight up impossible. Boys, calling Netflix's Cleopatra or The Woman King historically accurate is kind of like calling Inuyasha an accurate depiction of feudal era Japan. So why are people even doing this? What's even the point of going out of your way to depict these two historical landmarks as the good guys, quote unquote, and or people who stand proudly for whatever present day political agendas there are? What I think that they will all see is a movie that literally is going to shift the narrative for people of color. For Viola, a film centered around strong black female characters signals a changing industry. To know that there were real women out there that looked like me, that were warriors, that were doing this type of thing within an incredible time in history, that's exciting. Oh, it's for the sake of validating your own insecurities because you want to project yourself onto them. Right. <sighs> right on. Right on. Well, okay, so this is almost the usual nowadays. The absolute dumbasses behind both of these pieces of media both have the exact same intentions and make the exact same mistakes. They both want to be inclusive, in the form of shining a spotlight on a piece of history so it can validate a piece of the black community. But, well, you know, both completely bastardize history in the process. So badly, in fact, that the entire country of Egypt demanded $2 billion in compensation in a lawsuit for these idiots doing it. Oh, and what was Jada Pinkett Smith's response? Did she 
apologize and show remorse for smearing the history of an entire freaking country? Of course the hell not. What do you think she did? She doubled down on her stupidity and just played the racism card like they all do. And the director and the leading actors of The Woman King did the exact same goddamn thing. Oh, you, you just don't care about black celebrities, bro. Obviously, the reason why you're mad is you're just mad because you hate black people, bro. And thusly, of course, these both are an inclusivity bias. I do want to say that there are other movies about historical groups and figures like Casanova, Spartacus, and 300 that definitely also spin the truths of history a little bit, or maybe a lot of it in some situations. But here's the deal. These movies all have the leeway and freedom of being a movie that can spin the truth in order to, at the very least, make a satisfying film. As as opposed to telling an important piece of history. Because at the end of the day, most of these are still just action movies like Braveheart and etc. So they can get away with that to some degree. These two pieces of garbage? Yeah, this is a completely different scenario. The Woman King is not just a movie that spins the truth for the sake of being an enjoyable movie. The Woman King is a movie that straight up twists history around and makes one of the absolute worst tribes in Africa look like epic overpowered badasses to jerk a bunch of losers' egos off. And in Cleopatra's case, it's even worse, because Netflix's Cleopatra doesn't even have the excuse of being something specifically designed for entertainment and nothing else. It's specifically supposed to be a historical documentary. And, well, as I'm sure you know, historical documentaries are supposed to have... well... facts? <laughs> And not just some fantasy-fulfilling bullshit for the sake of perpetuating your delusions? I mean, look, on the subject of race-washing Cleopatra, there's countless amounts of very clear proof that Cleopatra was not black and she was actually Greek all over, you know, countless amounts of artifacts from ancient Egypt. L like, boys, what I'm saying right now, what I am telling you guys, I'm not even doing research to figure this shit out. I learned all of this in, like, middle school social studies class back in 2007. Like, boys, this is not news. It is not a recently discovered piece of breaking news on Fox 5 and CNN that Cleopatra is not dark skinned. This is common knowledge. I literally wasn't even old enough to bust a nut when I learned this very basic knowledge of world history in school. So how do these people in this dumbass documentary, these grown, middle-aged to elderly adults going out of their way to present themselves as history buffs not know this? I remember my grandma saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Wow, okay, um, wow, okay, wow, okay, wow, okay, wow. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here, but I I'm not going to because this is so award-winningly stupid that it's not even worth doing. But yeah, cool, that, that sounds like you've got a very rational and enlightened opinion on this subject matter. That very clearly qualifies you to star in a documentary. Yeah, definitely. Y your grand-grand told you to literally ignore public education school system knowledge and believe whatever the hell you want to make yourself feel good. Right, that, that, that's a very good argument of the point. Man, I can't wait for neo-Nazis to travel to Germany and try to recreate the Third Reich, and then when they immediately get arrested because Germany has an absolute zero tolerance policy for that shit, their excuse will be, yeah, well, my grandpa told me to ignore what my school teacher says, and the Nazis were actually the good guys. So yeah, we came here. Okay, so. Now that we have this context that both of these things are bastardizations of history that solely exist to validate the insecurities of a bunch of completely irrational, emotionally unstable black ladies, one thing is very clear. No matter what happens, no matter how well created either of these pieces of media are, both The Woman King and this Cleopatra documentary, they are both going to inevitably suck. They are both going to be bad. Like, foundationally bad because of the inherent bias from the people telling the story. Like a neo-Nazi history professor in college explaining the Holocaust. You know it's gonna be biased and bullshit from the get-go. Like, boys, I actually tried to sit down and watch a little bit of this documentary, and I'm telling you right now, they got way, way more wrong than just race in this, okay? There's little things that are just embarrassing as hell to get wrong as a documentary, like outfits, the way Romans are being portrayed 
in this, clearly showing them off to be easily manipulated idiots. And on top of that, the acting itself, especially on Cleopatra's actor's part, is just cringe to witness. Like, boys, the acting in the show is embarrassingly overdramatic. It makes college plays for Hamlet look like Game of Thrones Season 3. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I could only tolerate this garbage for like, roughly an episode and a half, but I very quickly noticed those things that I showed you, and these all clearly indicate that the documentary is not being treated like, well, a documentary, and is actually treated like just a four episode long fan fiction. It was beyond clear that they would not add in all the gory details of the historical degeneracies of the time period, you know? Well, unless it involved anyone outside of Cleopatra's kingdom, because they are not the good guys, quote unquote, in the eyes of the narrator, Jada Homewrecker Smith. And so, since the story was not made by neutral parties who have the ability to rationally tell history, and was instead made by people who just want to make Cleopatra look good, and just, 100% of the time, to validate their own insecurities, naturally they're not going to bring up all of the revolting stuff that needed to be done during this time period to maintain the hierarchy of loyalty. So yeah, while I have only watched a little bit of this, I'm very confident that naturally you're not going to see this documentary, quote unquote, talk about how Cleopatra fucked her own siblings for the sake of political stability. Like, what I'm trying to say is that this is not a documentary, bro. This is effing propaganda. The Woman King, once again, is exactly the same. The movie tries to make the Dahomey tribe, the central protagonist of this flick, look like a bunch of epically badass combat experts, but hell no, that is not the case. They were weak as hell. They needed roughly 500 troops to kill seven, count it, seven French soldiers. But again, it's not made by people who want to make an entertaining movie or even be semi-loosely accurate to history. It's made by people who just want to try and argue artificially produce an African figure or group to empower a modern target demographics ideology. So they can't even get that right. You get what I'm trying to say here? Both of these pieces of media are bad by default. No matter how high quality the production on either of these are, they are bad from the foundation. And the reason why is because they are both created by bad people. No amount of high production value is going to change the factually incorrect knowledge in either of these. Ugh. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up with this. Remember when I briefly brought up Whoopi Goldberg a little bit earlier? When I pointed out the fact that she did, in fact, straight up say that the Holocaust was not a big deal because black people weren't getting killed? Allow me to dip my toes a little bit further into that. I'm not going to read entire articles to explain this. To keep it as simple, she had a, a massive plethora of nonstop, very anti-Semitic comments that basically said things along the lines of, this is white people doing it to white people, so y'all going to fight amongst yourselves. Obviously, uh, a couple of weeks later, she came out and made a boilerplate bullshit apology that obviously is fake as hell. But do you see this quote right here that she specifically says? This is white people doing it to white people, so you guys are going to fight amongst yourselves. Whoopi Goldberg literally does not care about the innocent deaths of countless, countless amounts of Jewish people. The Holocaust is easily on par with black slavery in terms of discrimination-induced degeneracy in history. It's damn near one-to-one -one in some situations and areas, but despite that, she does not care. After all, why should she? It wasn't black people that got hurt, so it's not important. You see that? That makes my effing blood boil, bro. These idiots always cry like fucking bitches about the fact that, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, black people have been mistreated for ages. Racism is bad. And as a black person, I have to agree with that. That is an objective fact. But then when they see another group of people being shit on, they go, oh, no, nah, no, nah, that's not my problem, bro. You white people are stupid. That's your problem. You guys, yeah, that's your problem. You take care of it amongst yourselves. You fucking idiots. Like, boys, I'm going off topic right now, but I want to say that shit like this, two-faced garbage like this, is the driving force for me making videos like this, because I can't stand two-faced people. I effing despise two-faced people, man. <sighs> I'm sorry, I lost my temper. What I wanted to bring up that was actually important to this video is that, well, you see that mentality that she has? That it's okay for innocent people to get slaughtered like sheep just because, well, it doesn't affect her personal interests and people? Yeah, that is the base mentality behind the creation of historical bastardization. That is the pinpoint mindset behind this shit. 
Cleopatra is obviously factually wrong in its historical depictions from start to finish, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that it benefits the delusions of putting black culture on a pedestal. The Woman King is a gross, gross movie and how it depicts the Dahomey tribe as these epic unsung heroes when in reality they were arguably the worst of the worst in Africa at the time. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that it validates the ego of these super strong independent black women who don't need no man. Right and wrong, good and bad do not matter to these people. They only care about things when it benefits them. A group of obviously emotionally unstable black ladies produce media that shamelessly bastardizes history and think it's totally just to do this simply because, hey, it validates our insecurities. And that is why Cleopatra and the Woman King are prime examples of inclusivity bias. Thanks for watching, boys. We'll see you next time. Let's get to the Patreon roll call. My $10 supporters are Cute Eater, Jack G, Joseph Vincent, Sar Bombaclat, Procrastinator Dave, Skyer, Sindrin7, and Stormy Knight. And of course, we have our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as our $10 Patreons. If you'd like to be in the credits of my videos as well, just catch me on patreon.com slash blacklightjack. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.